Hi everyone, in this video I want to go over an extremely good book on discrete mathematics. Now, I have tons of books on discrete math, and this is one that I picked up uh, because someone on the channel uh, recommended it. Actually, uh, several people recommended this book, and this is the book by Susanna Epp. And this is a really good book for beginners in discrete math. So before I go through the contents, um, let me just explain why I think this is such a good book. Uh, one, it reads extremely well. Uh, compared to other popular books like Rosin's book or Grimaldi's book, this actually reads uh, quite well. Two, it has plenty of exercises. Three, it has answers to most of the exercises. So I think this is probably one of the easiest, if not the easiest to read, um, discrete math book that I have. This is the table of contents. It's really, really thorough. So they have like a description below each section and it tells you, you know, what it covers uh, in each section. So quite a lot of information in the content. It's almost like an index. Here the contents keep going and I'll just talk as I uh, glance through it. Um, it. This is a really good book. I was really happy that I picked it up. And again, it was really uh, people leaving comments about discrete math books, in particular this one. I must have gotten, I think, three comments the same day about this book. And I was like, okay, I got to get this book. And I don't remember who the people were um, that left the comments. I should probably search. But in any case, those people were right. Uh, this is an extremely good book. So if you're taking a discrete math class and you don't have this book yet, I highly recommend you pick it up. I think I picked it up for less than $10. I try to set that as my maximum usually when I'm purchasing uh, older books. And it seems like the table of contents is just massive. And again, it's because they provide so much information for each section, you know. But it's all the, all the really basic, uh, regular, standard stuff that you would see uh, in a discrete math class. You know, Susanna Epp uh, covers all of this and, and more. These are the exercises for the section on mathematical induction. And they're pretty good. I mean, Susanna does have uh, a lot of exercises and plenty of uh, examples. So the exercises are pretty good. Um, some other textbooks might have more exercises, uh, but honestly, I really didn't find that there was a lack of exercises. So I did most of these problems uh, in this section, and they weren't too bad. I feel like most people could read the book and you know do a good majority of these problems. Some of the sections are easier than others. I mean, this is really a, a good book for beginners because you do have a good mix of easy. So this is the section on sequences and you see these problems are pretty simple. Um, it's a fun book to work through though because you can read it and you know you can understand it and you can actually do some of the problems. So you actually do get a lot uh, from working through a book like this. I should mention that this is a very big book. Um, it's, it's, it's quite thick and heavy. Uh, it's one of those really big, um, you know, discrete math books. So uh, it's heavy to carry around, which is a downside, uh, but it lays flat. So when you're like working on math, um, it's pretty easy to like lay it down and read it. And, you know, I spent a lot of time doing uh, problems from this book. And again, was very pleased uh, with uh, the level of difficulty uh, and the questions. This is a strange section. It's the section on digital logic circuits. I actually read everything this book has on digital logic circuits, and I did almost every single problem. Um, if you're wondering why, um, I have no idea. Uh, I thought it was quite interesting, though, and it's really a good read. Like, you, you, you read this and you learn. I felt like I learned a lot. This is something that, you know, I didn't really know a lot about, and I thought maybe I should, you know, you know learn something new today. So I spent all day uh, you know, working through all of these problems with these diagrams, and I made a couple videos, and uh, I was really happy with the book. I thought, wow, like, this actually makes sense. This is such a good book. Those people who, who recommended this book on YouTube were totally correct. I mean, I love this book. <laughs> this is where Epp talks about factorials. This is just an example. Uh, and you see she goes through all of the uh, simplification techniques, and she does a really good job explaining. Um, I think this is way better uh, for beginners than the books that are used at, at most schools today, like the Grimaldi book or the Rosin book. Uh, why isn't this book used more? I don't really know. I don't really have the answer to that. Um, I mean, look at this proof here, this nice little uh, property, uh, proof of properties, just really elegant, you know, with products, just really, really beautiful. 
So these are the answers in the back of the book. And so you see here, you actually see proofs. So Susanna provides proofs. You can see there it says, hint, proof. So she actually gives full proofs to some of the exercises. Now also notice that it says solutions and hints to selected exercises. So it's my experience usually that when books say hints and solutions to selected exercises, that they mean like less than all of the odds. I'm not quite sure that's the case here though. I feel like Susanna provides maybe close to all the odds and maybe a little bit more. So for example, over here you see 11, 13, 15, and then look, then you have 16, but, but then she jumps to 21. So, you know, how many uh, solutions do we have? I guess the only way to really find out would be to count <laughs> all of the exercises and all of the solutions and then to determine like, okay, is she giving us answers to more than half or at least half? I don't know. I felt like it was a pretty good number. You know, like I said, I worked out a lot of problems for, from the sections on induction and on the circuit sections, and most of the problems had exercises. So I felt like I was able to check my answers, and I felt like I was able to use it uh, for self-study. This is the section on one-to-one -one and onto and inverse functions. Um, Susanna does a really good job in this section explaining the concepts. You can see the diagrams there. Uh, with pictures of the domain and, you know, the co-domain. Really, really good stuff. I think this would be really good for people who are, one, trying to learn discrete math on their own, or two, taking a class on discrete math. As most discrete math books do, um, she provides a good variety of exercises on sets. Uh, this is usually a pretty good section in most discrete math books, uh, and Susanna does a pretty good job here. So this is kind of fun. This came stapled to one of the pages. So this is a syllabus. So whoever uh, owned this book before me or at some point used this class in 2000, I believe uh, this was at the State University uh, of New York, Stony Brook. So uh, 20 years ago, someone used this for a class. And you see here, there's their syllabus, talks about their exams. Um, Talks about cheating, you know, old school, right? This is, you know, a, a blast from the past. I mean, sure, it's only been 20 years, or you could say, wow, you know, it's been 20 years. So uh, a much older book. I think this book was printed in the 90s. Let's take a look. Yeah, here you see copyright 1995. So yeah, this book apparently is from the 90s. So it's not that old, you know, compared to a lot of uh, other books. You know, a lot of discrete math books are, are really old. Uh, this is somewhat of a newer one, I guess, compared to a lot of the books I have. This is a much newer book. I have a lot of really old books, and in comparison, I think this one is relatively new. This is kind of fun. This is the assignment um, that came with the book. So uh, whoever owned this book had to do some induction problems. And look at this, number six. Note, this is a very difficult problem, and it is probably outside the range of difficulty for this and I think it says class on the next page. Let me look. Class. Oh, it will not be graded. Okay. In the final homework. Okay, so he just kind of assigned it and said, do it, but I'm not going to grade it. Kind of like a challenge problem. Uh, too bad it wasn't extra credit. <laughs> For whoever this person was, I don't know uh, who's, whose assignment this was. So overall, this is a really good book. You know, I spent uh, a couple days uh, working through this book after I bought it. Uh, I did uh, everything with digital logic circuits. I looked at the section on one-to-one -one functions. I looked at the section on sets and glanced at other sections, um, the induction section, etc. So it's, it's a pretty good book. And I think if you're trying to get um, a book for beginners on discrete math, I highly recommend this one. Uh, I was really shocked at how good it was. I didn't expect it to be this good. You know, a lot of times people recommend books, they're like, oh, it's a really good book, you know, and I'll go out and get it, you know, it's like eight bucks or whatever. So I buy it and I get it. I'm like, ah, all right. And I open this one up. I was like, wow, you know, this, this, this thing, this, this book is, is really good. This is an awesome book. Um, really quite shocked at how good it was. You know, usually uh, I'm optimistic, but I, I just, with books, you never know, right? So what's a good book to one person uh, is not necessarily a good book to another person. So keep that in mind. So if you buy this book and you don't think it's awesome, you know, I think it's good. Uh, I think it's worth it. Uh, check it out. Again, the book is Discrete Math and Applications, and it's the one by Epp. And I definitely think it's better than the Grimaldi and Rosin books. It's much, much easier to read, and it's much, much better than those books. Good luck.